Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, um, taking my Q1, which I, it's a good keyboard, don't get me wrong, but I've never understood the fact that it comes default with a steel plate. Steel plate is resonant, it's the cheapest plate, it's what you get on, I mean, $10 keyboards that are mechanical, go to with hot swap, come with steel plates. Now, granted, the Q1 V2, I, I think it's showing its age is about at least a year old, if not two. Um, I can't remember when all that happened; it just blurs. Um, and they had they had to make some changes and release the V2, and I bought that shortly thereafter. But it's, mm, I mean, I, I haven't quite quite found a place where I like how it sounds. It feels pretty good. Um, and I like using it when I have, but the sound has been lacking. So today I've got the FR4 plate and I'm gonna be switching this one out for the FR4 and then doing a sound test and see what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and get started and open this up. And I've got the addition with the knob. I'm gonna set it on top of the box so that it can sit flat while the knob lays off to the side there. Oh, and one thing I do like to do, if at all possible, before I get started, is to find me a lid where I can put some screws in. All right, well, let's go. All right, now that we got the screws out, we can go ahead and take the top frame. Off nice and carefully because we do have a JST cable here. So let's go ahead and we want to be careful and pull out this JST right here that is attached to the top frame. And then boom, we've got it out. Alright, so now we can take PCB off. We can take this foam. That's why we can't just go ahead and lay this down here. Uh, <clears throat> As we can see, here's the plate. The plate has the gaskets, but I believe there's some gaskets in the plate kit. This would also be a good time if you wanted to do some tuning of the stabilizers. I think mine are fine, from what I recall, but. I'll probably give it a test. We have um, the uh, foam gaskets, poron gaskets, and it looks like some standoffs as well as some screws. And we have our FR4 plate. Alright, looks like we got just enough to go around. Here is the gaskets for this short side of the uh, plate That's near where the cable connects. Alright, now that we've got the gaskets on our new FR4 plate, it's uh, time to install the studs, and the studs will probably go on the plate. The studs have their own little uh, nut. Uh, it's tiny. It's very tiny. Uh, this is going to be fun. I'm just going to stick to the four, because this ain't no fun. Alright, now we've got the studs for the plate on there. I want to go ahead and install it the correct orientation. And there we are. The FR4 plate PCB and the PCB phone is 
reattached. So um, I wanted to make sure to mention this. I a lot of times can skip out on using the uh, studs all together, but I didn't. I did the side ones. I didn't do the center uh, studs, and basically there was too much of a gap between the switches and the PCB. So I had to end up uh, taking it apart and putting those in. So if you are replacing the plate, especially with the FR4 plate, I'm going to guess it's it's probably similar uh, to the way that it would be on um, the PC plate or any other plate. Um, these are important because otherwise the PCB in the middle just kind of sags. So while the switches are in the plate, they are not in the sockets, the hot swap sockets. So I wanted to make that addendum uh, to make clear. If anybody does it, don't follow my first advice and skip out. Um, it's best to just go ahead and install. So now it's just a matter of replacing it in the case and seeing what it sounds like. Yeah, the Q1V2 brought these little silicon gaskets that on their own don't do that much, but when combined with a proper uh, force brake mod, it does seem to do a good job. A much easier angle to plug in the JSD connector. And now we can go ahead and set this piece on top. And here we are with the refreshed Keychron Q1 V2, as the PCB says. Um, I'm going to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison of this one and the mods of Geekab 1, so I wanted to find a switch that I have enough of to go around for both. So, this is the Akko um, Lavender, Purple Lavender. It's a nice tactile, light tactile, but it's more tactile than a brown, I'd say. Let me go ahead and load up these keycaps and then we'll come back and figure out what we'll do for keys. All right, there we are loaded up with Akko Lavender Purple uh, tactile switches. Um, for this build, I wanted to go ahead. I had yet to break into um, this set. It is the Blue Samurai Colorway from Ghost Judge. It's honestly pretty damn good for the price. Um, I don't want to mention brands, but there's definitely been some keycaps that were pricier than this that did not have as nice of a feel um, of a thickness, 1.4 millimeters thick. KP Republic did send me out a few of these sets uh, for me to use. Um, I'm filming a series. I can't release it really until it's all finished because they all kind of interconnect with each other. So it's going to be actually a couple of months and I still have, I have to go through cycles of, of having um, people within my circle take a look and give me some feedback to make sure that I'm not missing anything. My first Ghost Judges set was a white on black that I bought and I was really quite happy with it. I got that when I was getting a keyboard, and I think that added like, I wanna say $28 uh, to the kit. You know how KP Republic can have, you can just get the PCB, or you can get the PCB and the plate, or you can get the PCB, the plate, the stabilizers, the PCB, the plate, the stabilizers, the case. Um, all of that with the switches and the keycaps and with the cables, but they have a mix, and I, I forgot which build this was for, but I threw in uh, the white on blacks in there. And I wasn't actually honestly expecting much because I just, I didn't know. Um, but I was quite surprised because before that I was buying the, um, the Young Queen, uh, double shot ABS sets that are on AliExpress, which don't get me wrong, they're, they're decent. But one thing that I've noticed is within a couple of weeks of use, there is some shine that starts to develop. It's not horrible mind you but the one set that i've used the most um, has developed a very i mean it's it's very visible amount of shine so that being said um, i have used a couple of these sets 
not as long as that AVS set because I didn't have it as long, but I use it quite often and it has not had any shine. It still has a nice feel to it. And like I said, they're, they're nicely double shot and they're um, just the colorway clones. They're not cloning any novelties. Um, you just have your, your standard keys basically. Um, and as well as your ISO, your Alice. Let me go ahead and load these up and then we'll, uh, Go ahead and finish out with a sound test so that I can get to the head-to-head -head comparison of the Keychron and the uh, and the Mons Geek M1. Well, that was fun. Um, I had to take it all apart again. On a lot of keyboards, I'm able to get away with not using the studs or only using the side studs, but. Um, because of the stiffness of the FR4 plate. I mean, it still has some flex, mind you. Um, but because of, I don't know, the stiffness or whatever, the, the switches that were in the middle of the keyboard um, were not going into the actual sockets because the PCB was kind of bowing a little bit when you'd press it. So it would get locked into the plate, but it wasn't fully or even in um, the PCB and close to the sun and the space bar was acting really weird too. Um, so I had to go back and I had to use all six columns or studs for the plate to PCB assembly. So, but now that it's put together, I've got to say this, I mean, the plate made all the difference in the world. I've been, like I said, in the beginning of the video, I've been struggling with this, um, this Q1 but I never changed out the plate. I did a whole bunch of other mods and I just wasn't satisfied with with the sound, with the bass sound. And now I have a good bass sound that I can uh, build up from. But I'm gonna be uh, doing a head-to-head -head against the Mons Geek with this one. Um, and I believe I have the FR4 plate loaded on that one, but that's another video. So I'll leave you guys with a sound test of the Q1 V2, uh, now with an FR4 plate and the PE foam. And these lovely Ghost Judges Cherry Double Shot PVT Blue Samurai. Hope that you enjoy the sound test. And if you guys have any questions uh, about this, please let me know in the comments below or hit up the Discord at discord.budgetkeeps.com. And um, we've, we always welcome anybody. You got questions, come on on board. You'll get a lot of uh, responses and a lot of help. So um, we're about to hit 20,000. Uh, subscribers on Budget Keebs, and we're going to be doing a massive giveaway. So if anyone's interested, come on over and uh, pay us a visit. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.